and welcome to Catechrist Magazine. We can be found on the web at www.catechrist.com. My name is Jason J. Rock Houston, and we're speaking with lead singer Matt Zane from the band uh, Society One. And you guys are based out of Los Angeles, aren't you, Matt? Correct. We've been based out of Los Angeles now for about uh, close to 25 years. Wow, Actually, you... over 25 years if you, if you count pre-first actual album release in 1999. Wow, can you believe it's been that long? No, I can't actually. I wake up in the morning and can't believe that, number one, I'm still alive, number two, not in jail, Doing what and you love number to do. three, that the band has been going on since the mid-90s. It's kind of wild. And you've kind of been the one mainstay, and um, and let me ask you, um, I always love to pe ask people um, about the band's name, um, pretty interesting name, Society One. How did you come up with that? You know, it's really difficult to remember, to be quite honest with okay. you, but okay. if, I, if I really try to rack my memory, I, I think it had to do with something about creating some new type of society or the number one society or some new type of yeah yeah i could see that because you know like that i was almost gonna say um although I, I don't know if it's really fitting now but being that you've been around um you know over 20 years but i was gonna say i would kind of um put you guys in with a new breed of metal um in spite of that because i mean when i think of kind of old school metal i think of like sabbath ozzy um you know, Priest and, you know, Maiden and, and Sabbath. And like I said, um, I, I would say you guys are a new breed because um, you're kind of what came after. And yet, amazingly, like you said, you've built this huge fan base. You've lasted for over 20 years. So, you know, you're doing something right. And, and when um, even listening to the latest single, um, you know, and, and checking out the video um, for, um, for, for... I never saw you. I never saw you. Excuse me. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, it sounds like... Um, you guys got your own fresh kind of, it, it's amazing, you've been a band that's been together that long, you got like a fresh original sound, you don't sound like you're trying to sound like uh, Metallica or Sabbath or anybody that came before, you just kind of got your, it's kind of a modern um, sound, and yet you guys been around 20 years, you got your own thing going, that's pretty amazing. Yeah, well, I mean, it, it really, it's changed and it's morphed and it's developed over the course of the years. I mean, I'm sure some people, there's a ton of people out there, obviously, that don't know who we are. Yeah, yeah. But if they if they go back into our catalog through Spotify or through YouTube, um, you'll find that, um, you know, the band started off in the 90s, you know, when there was a lot of other new metal in the Hollywood scene. So yeah. we absolutely could fit in at that point with the Corns and the the Deftones and Cole Chamber and Static X and all those bands. But then, you know, it started to develop and, you know, we have certain records that kind of lean into more styles than others. But this style that we're kind of in now, the one that's on Black Level 6, our, our latest album, uh, we've kind of been doing this probably for about maybe the last, like, two or three records. So it's just something that just came naturally and we're just kind of in this phase of our career right now and who knows what's going to happen over yeah. the next five yeah, yeah, years you or know, whatever. Kind of some of those uh, so-called new metal bands, um, I think a lot of the reasons uh, that a lot of those bands kind of fell by the wayside, they didn't um, have a staying power as... Um, society one might be because a lot of those new metal bands that um you'd hear them talk about you know back in the day oh, oh we don't do the, we don't do guitar solos and stuff like that and i used to think why not you know um i guess they're trying to have a kind of a different sound but but again um i think um society one is one of those bands that, that's kind of um stood the test of time you know because um you know you got you got a great sound going and also matt um your publicist sent me um uh, something saying that you're very active on social media, you know, you personally, and that um, I checked out your Instagram, and you got, um, I don't even want to say um, hundreds, because I, I dare say that's just, uh, that's kind of a small number right there, but you had a ton of uh, cool-looking videos on your Instagram that um, I urge people to go kind of check out. Have you always kind of been into the visual and doing videos like that? Well, I'll tell you what, um, it's, it's kind of a weird thing. Now, I, I, again, I don't want to make this too long of an explanation, but people really uh, don't, uh, won't get it until I explain. I mean, so we've already established the fact that we've been you know, doing this 20 plus years. Yeah. Uh, I recently, in the last couple of years, I, I met my current girlfriend who is about 17 years younger than me. Wow. And she came to a show where we were opening up for Static X and she didn't know who we were prior to the show that she went to to yeah. see us perform. And then after we started dating, she knew who the band was because she obviously came to see us play but she only knew of the current 
place that the band is in now. So she only knew of like the very recent things that happened. And yeah, as yeah. we dated lo longer, she started to understand the band's history. And one day she said to me, she goes, people just don't have any idea that of everything that you guys have done. And it's all so interesting. I, I really wish that more people could see it. And I just started thinking to myself, I started thinking, wow, the band has so, been around for so long that a lot of the stuff that we did was even prior to when YouTube existed or yeah, Facebook yeah. or Instagram. So what basically one day I said, you know what I'm going to start to do? I'm going to, I'm going to delve into our, our vaults and I'm going to start to restore and find a lot of our stuff that we've done over the last 20, 24, 25 years. And I'm going to start uploading it for people to see. And recently that, that kind of just culminated in the uh, legacy TikTok for the band society one band up on TikTok, And uh, we're just putting reels out and content and little clips of, of everything that we've done over the last 25 years and so that's why it, it, it's kind of gotten to that point now it's basically just to show people like a lot of the new generation uh that you know look there's all this stuff that we've done and you're probably not familiar with it and it goes beyond just the last couple of records over the last couple of years that's kind of interesting because you know um I, I very much agree with um, what your girlfriend said there because um you guys are um i'll be real honest of society one's a band that um i've heard the name i'm aware of who you guys are and yet at the same time um i probably couldn't name um outside of a current single i'm talking about um maybe even two two songs that you guys have done and um it's kind of interesting a band that's been around you know a little over 20 years obviously people are going to know the name and, and um i don't quite know why that that's the story but it's kind of cool that you have all the, that you've had this archive of video material that you've saved over the years i mean um was it hard to find this stuff? Did you have to go looking for it, or um, did you know? Are you amazed that you had that much stuff? Uh, well, you know, I had most of it uh, put away in um, uh, storage. Yeah. And uh, I, you know, I am finding a lot of it that I'm surprised that we actually do have. Uh, and some of it is unfortunately on such arcane versions yeah. of, of media that it's really too difficult to restore. And unfortunately, some of the most crazy and intense stuff that we've done wasn't captured because back in those days, there weren't such thing as phones on... Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, on... Uh, cameras on phones um but uh yeah you know it's it's just uh it's just one of those things that that luckily that we do have some stuff uh, yeah. and and as it goes out it, it is really interesting to see the reaction i mean we posted uh, one of our biggest shows ever just uh this past week when we did download in front of eighty thousand people and 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 literally the clip was going viral and people were commenting they, they were saying what alternative universe did this happen and how did we not see this how did we not know about this happening and it was obviously in front of 80,000 people in the biggest festival in the UK and so it's, it's a real interesting thing to kind of see people rediscover it and, and see their comments like wow how, how did this band slip through the cracks I mean they were obviously around and and they were playing with big bands like on the stage that day like System and yeah, yeah. Slipknot and Slayer and, and uh, but yeah we, we don't know who they are so yeah it's a real interesting kind of journey unearthing this stuff and trying to restore it to the best of my ability and bring it out there to people to rediscover the band and know that we have this rich history and that there there really is a lot of depth to to our career what was cool about that is it shows me um 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 how how ahead of your time you were matt um you and the band both i mean not the fact that you know you, you know um you you saved so much material but um but you even thought to kind of capture it on film and you know you make the point about going back to 1999 looking at all the tech when i think just my lifetime you know um you know, I remember when they used to have those big Betamax um, tapes that you know they used to ta um, tape TV shows and everything on, and and then VHS, and then and then we had the laser disc and DVD, Blu-rays, and now they're gotten the you know 4Ks. I mean, just to give you an example, I recently purchased a a 50-inch TV, is one of those smart TVs, and I thought I got a real great deal on it, um, $300, got around Christmas time, and um, it was a 4K TV. So I'm thinking I'm gonna re re let me tell you though. Took me two days and over nine hours to download like eight eight hundred megabytes of software to just get a TV set up. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, I, I hear you. And you know, as far as like knowing uh, to film these things as they were happening throughout our career, I will tell you that in the in the time that when it was happening, I knew that what we were doing was unique. Yeah. I didn't know how unique it was going to be at the time, so I knew that I had to capture as much of it as I could and as I said it was very difficult back then even when we 
evolved to uh, digital video, uh, you know, tapes were five, ten, fifteen dollars a tape. So, yeah. you know, even like it was, it wasn't reasonable to even film every show, yeah. which is unfortunate because we did miss a lot of things. Now that if I talk about within interviews, the youth basically says, you know what, if we don't see it, it didn't happen, and that's a real thing that they say. So I can tell people, I can tell you, I can tell yeah, yeah. Them, interview people things that happened, and they're all oh, that didn't happen, and I don't have video of it, so it didn't happen. So it, it's just one of those things. And again, bringing my young girlfriend back into it, when I used to tell her these stories, she kind of looked at me strange out of one of her eyes. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, 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 whatever, dude. You're just like, whatever. I, you know, I seen you play at the clubs. Yeah, there was, you know, there was four or five hundred, seven hundred people there. But you're, why well, you've never played in front of eighty thousand people. You were never an MTV. And then I started finding these videos, and I started showing her, and she's like, "Oh my God, you weren't lying." Yeah, you yeah. Know what I mean? So like that. That's that's the only unfortunate part about it is that I wish I had more than I actually do because then I could tell more stories and have video to back it up. And it gets even more crazy. I, I, if you go up even to my uh, my, my TikTok, like I said, yeah. I I literally have videos up there with me in a reality show with Kelly Clarkson from American Idol. Wow. I've got the videos of Jacoby, the lead singer of Papa Roach, talking to people, talking to giving an interview, explaining how it was the inspiration for one of his hit singles talking about me by name i've got video of me talking to dave navarro with dave navarro explaining that i'm the one that got him into human body suspension and nobody ever believes these things they yeah yeah so a lot of people God, i actually yeah. have video clips of this where i can show hey well here it is and then even my girlfriend goes oh my god like you weren't even lying about this why would i so, lie why would i lie and it's like uh, you know a lot of people um that are of that age uh, you know, if, if they don't see it on the internet, it must not have happened. You, you got to stop and realize that um, there was a time when the internet did not even exist. And, you know, talk about like doing interviews like this, how, how different that has changed. I mean, um, I remember back in the day, like when they had, you know, Circus Magazine, Metal Edge. Did you ever appear in any of those magazines, you know, um, before they kindly um, fell by the wayside? Yeah, absolutely. I've got, I've got tons and tons of magazines. I've got to get them all scanned, but yeah. I was in everything from I had I had five pages in Spin um, wow. in 1998. I was in Metal Hammer, Metal Edge, Kerrang, wow. Hip Curator. I was in Details, Rolling Stone. I literally was probably in about a hundred different magazines. Yeah. Massive layouts, massive uh, uh, multiple pages. Um, and I still have the majority of those. Same thousand, the very first issue of Revolver ever with Jim Morrison on the cover wow. I had a whole page in Revolver I was featured in Revolver for my suspensions I mean I could go on and on and on and, and I plan to get them all scanned and uploaded at some point so people can see but with the magazines uh, the, the younger people don't necessarily really care that much because they yeah. don't understand how it's, big of a deal they used to be so it's not really uh, that impressive it's not as, as uh, useful as no. the, the video clips but for are. people that were there back in the day I mean um I used to love to get Metal Edge Mag. That was my rag, you know, back in the day. And I and the reason I asked it, I thought I'd I, I thought I remember seeing um, an article too on Society One back in the day. And um, it's so sad that they fell by the wayside, but they're kind of making a comeback on the internet. I see recently, so that's that's kind of cool. And um, it's kind of cool to just talk about that Society One has been around so long that you were in uh, you know and to hear that you were not just in a magazine like metal age and revolver magazine and all those um great magazines from back but to hear that you were featured in spin magazine i, I mean i just cannot spin magazine today what it is I, I just cannot picture a band like society one even being featured in spin magazine so how cool is that yeah four pages believe it or not and i still have the article uh i forget who was on the cover i yeah. think it may have been whole uh but yeah we have four pages they they came out they did uh full photo shoots and an article and the, the whole bit and that came out in 1998 believe it or not yeah and, and you know you made a good point about um having all this um footage on your tiktok and instagram and and even though you don't have everything, I mean, like I said, I don't even want, I really urge people to go check this stuff out because for themselves. It's just, we got a ton of clips, uh, just so cool to look at. I mean, I, I did not even have time to look at everything that was on there to prep for this interview. And, and like I said, man, this guy's got a ton of material and um, just kind of fun little shots. And even though you don't have everything, I'll tell you, I dare say that, um, I, I dare say that you have a, um, probably over 100 videos if not more you know <laughs> well, well actually i mean the interesting thing 
thing about it is, is I'm actually not done archiving it all yet. Yeah, oh I'm yeah. still in the process. I'm up to about, I think, 137 clips yeah. um, over the course of the last uh, 24 years. And I probably still have, I, I, I'm guessing I can get to about 500 clips before I run out of content. It Amazing. It depends on how degraded the um, older tapes are because I start, I'm, right now going through like the dvds the yeah, DVD yeah. Tapes. eventually i'm going to get to the vhs and the and you know stuff like that yeah yeah so there's still a lot more to go it's just it's a full-time job unfortunately and you know like i, I don't i can't i can't dedicate you know eight hours a day to no, our, but i need an archive I mean, look at what you've what you, look what you've dedicated your time to get up there so far 500 plus videos that that's amazing and you know um, you make a couple good points with this stuff. I mean, I was reading like a lot of people have been asking, why doesn't Ozzy and Sharon Osbourne, why don't they release like more videos with Randy Rhodes? And and I was reading amazingly, you know, back in 1981, 82, outside of some major um, gigs they played, they didn't used to videotape everything back then. And so they only, they like only have a few concerts were actually filmed with Randy. And so um, even the big bands like that back in the day do not have a ton of footage just because it was not done like it is today. No, and that's the other thing. It's just like that's that's what a lot of the people just don't realize. Uh, you know, even like somebody like Ozzy Osbourne, where's all the footage they played hundreds of shows? Yeah. Where is it all? Well, back then, film cost money. Yeah. Not everybody had big video cameras. There was no phones with cameras. Even there was even to have a video camera with a VHS tape. Was oh yeah, a, a pretty big deal. And those cameras were like a thousand dollars back then. So yeah, it's a uh, you know it's unfortunate, but I, I do feel fortunate that I do have a lot of it, and I'm not even done yet. So uh, I'm able to put out um you know minimally a, a new piece of content every day some days i put up to three clips up a day uh and it's just it's just it's, it just keeps going and people they're like wow when does it end and i go yeah, yeah. i don't know i'll let you know when i get to the bottom it's a, of, it's a treasure uh, treasure chest of, of, of little goodies that you're releasing um and and i imagine you're, you're uh, filming new materials with the current lineup and being on tour and all that yeah, yeah. So, unfortunately, uh, the last big tour we did prior to COVID, we, we opened up for, we were on the Static X uh, tour uh, when they did the Memorial tour. Yeah. And we were on that, and uh, unfortunately, you know, I, I got pretty sick out on that, that last tour, and we did not film all that much. We wow. have a couple of clips here and there from that, but I really wasn't my usual self in terms of documenting as much of yeah, yeah. the things as I normally do. And then the pen pandemic hit and so obviously it was two years before we played another show but with that being said uh we are scheduled to go out again with static x and fear factory and dope uh next year in february oh wow and that's a full tour that's almost for a full month and then we're going to be back to our usual documenting absolutely 100 percent of everything front to back to be able to create new content because by then we think that the majority of the older stuff will finally be posted and you know the ultimate goal is exactly what you said we want to we want to have the clips up there for people to be able to look over the course of a you know 25 year career and then obviously we want to pick up and, and document more of what we're, what we're doing now but we plan to get back to that uh next february yeah. and really and really be um you know involved in that and getting all the, the current stuff because we did really slack in 2019 unfortunately but well tonight, you, look, still look at what you got and, and you know matt and um, I, I'm a huge KISS fan, and I, I, I kind of equivalent to KISS, not that you're not uh, sound anything or look anything like KISS, but I mean, um, they're one band that's got a ton of video material they, they've put up, and, and they may put out more, but I mean, KISS has been doing it for 50 years. You've been doing it for half of that, and, and, and still you're right up there with having a ton of video stuff. Yeah, man. Well, you know, like, uh, it, you know, it, again, it's just we, we realized that it was interesting and we did the best that we could. And that's uh, and that's pretty much that. You know, on, on a side note, I mean, you're probably unaware of this, but um, my uh, a bass player that I had in my band for 15 years named uh, Dirt, D.V. Karloff, he yeah. recently passed away this last year. And he wasn't in the band at the time. He hasn't been in the band in a couple of years. He went on to be in a couple other bands, Three-Headed Snake and uh, Hate Song. Uh, but when he passed away, I actually created a documentary about him called The Ultra Noise. I was going to ask and, you that because I, I, I was reading something about that um, right before I left uh, left the office today. Yeah, and it's a movie that you can go on YouTube and watch for free. All you have to Ooh. type in is D.B. Karloff, The Ultra Noise. But the reason why I bring that up is you made me uh, re remember it because uh, Dirt was a huge fan of Kiss was that when we showed the movie, when it went to the film festival circuit, it, it played at... Um, 
at the uh, Hollywood uh, Horror, the uh, American Horror Film Festival. Wow. When people watched it, they couldn't believe the amount of footage that we had of dirt. They, they, they had no idea. They thought it was going to be a typical doc- rock documentary where the majority of people just talked about the person that, they, that, that the movie was about. But the fact that I had so much footage of him, it was just another testament again to realizing how unique our situation was at the time and just filming so much. So if you really want to get a, a long form instead of the little clips that yeah. see a lot of stuff, I highly recommend going to check out that movie uh, with Dirt. And you will eventually love it because if you love Kiss, the subplot of that movie, the subplot is his relationship with Kiss over the course of the year, starting at five years old uh. until a couple months before he passed away. And I don't want to give away the big reveal okay. of why it's a fun movie to watch. But if you're into Kiss, you'll love that movie because it's a typical rock and roll story of a guy that came from the uh, cornfields of Indiana to Hollywood because he loved Kiss. Wow. I don't want to tell you what yeah, happened. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, he went through and lived the rock and roll dream. But I, I highly recommend it. D.V. Karloff, The Altered Noise. It's a great rock doc. It's about an hour and 15 minutes long. And I promise you that you will not be disappointed if you check it out. I will tell you, Matt, um, I, I thank you for talking about that. I was going to ask you about it. But um, I, what I would like to do once I've had a chance to see the film, maybe... Um, a little down the line after this interview here post um, I would like to maybe do a follow up interview talk specifically about the film you know for so many obvious reasons I mean um, the fact that um, you know you probably I'd imagine um, just based on all your other video stuff I've seen done a great job I mean probably you know paying great tribute to your fallen friend and bandmate um, and, and I think it'd be a great way to kind of you know uh, get the word out about the film and really kind of um, you know, talk about your buddy there and uh, I mean so I imagine the idea came after he sadly passed away and you just kind of um, you know, talk a little bit about how, how that all came about did you just how long was it before you got the idea to do it well listen man it's a very creepy creepy explanation and a lot of people don't believe me when I when I give them to this but the uh, reality of the situation is is that ever since I knew Dirt uh, we would always he would always tell me that he was going to pass away prior to 50 years old wow and uh, one, our very last show that we played together, which happened to be in San Diego, San Diego, when we were opening up for Doyle, you know, uh, yeah, the guy that played wow. the Misfits. Yeah. Uh, we went to dinner after sound check, and we started talking, and he, we just said jokingly, you know, uh, he told me he said when I pass, you know, make you know make sure that the uh, my memorial is cool, and and then we jokingly said, oh yeah, dude, he, he said you probably have the most footage of me, so you're in charge of making the movie. Wow. And he actually told me this while he was alive, and that was our last show that we ever played together. And so when he passed, it wasn't really a matter of getting an idea. It wasn't a matter of thinking that I was just going to do this nice tribute for my fallen band member, best friend that I had for 17 wow. years. It was more about the fact that I, I told my friends and my girlfriend and my family, I said, well, I got to do this for him or he's going to come back and haunt me. Wow. Because uh, he told me to do it before before he passed, and that's exactly why and how the movie came about. And it's it's crazy to to think about, but that's that's why that's why it was made. Wow! Oh wow, wow! I mean, talk about premonition. I mean, um, and, and I, I I'm curious was Karloff his um, stage name or um, is, is that his birth name? No, his birth name wasn't D.V. Karloff, but his nickname was Dirt. But no, you can find his real name if you look. At no, no, the reason I, reason I ask is I, I, was, I was pretty sure it was his stage name, but um, when I seen the name, I thought, um, remind me of uh, legendary Boris Karloff did all those great horror films. Yes, and, and he loved horror movies, and that's partially why it all came about. And, you know, and I'm just going to say to, like, to wet your whistle even more in terms of checking this movie out, it's got some great stars in it. Uh, Dave Navarro gave a little wow. uh, in, a interview in it about when he got to see his play. Play. Uh, Raymond Herrera's in it about working with us. He's in the movie from Fear Factory, the from Fear Factory's in a little bit. It's got great mentions of when he uh, uh, met Wayne Static and we played with Wayne Static and Wayne Static's very last show ever in America before wow. Wayne passed. Um, you know, obviously it's got uh, his uh, ex guitar player from Ministry Sin, who he's in a band with, the Three Headed Snake. So yeah, it's got it's a it's a great uh, some good really good names in it, some really good name recognition. It's it's just a really fun movie all the way around. It's not a depressing. Oh, that's you cool. Know, 
rock More. and roll thing. It's it's a real celebration of, of life. And you're going to find out some crazy interesting facts in there, too. Like, I'm telling you, man, it's a lot of people think, oh, well, why would the, why would I watch this movie about a guy? I mean, you know, Dirt wasn't, you know, massively famous. But yeah. then they watch the movie and they go, oh, my God, that was that was great. And that that's kind of amazing that you can do that um, with a guy that was not as, you know, well known as let's say a uh, Randy Rhodes or somebody um, like that, you know, um, and I think it just shows you that not only is it a great celebration and memory of his life, but um, it, it shows what the guy um, meant to you. It shows that he ha- must have had a unique story. But people, I mean, if you even look at the Anvil movie, until that movie came out, a lot of people had never heard of Anvil. Exactly. And and, yeah. and then they were all of a sudden celebrated once um, people saw this movie, and then people would go had never heard of a band would go buy all the albums, you know. So that's kind of cool that you did that. And talk about putting it up on YouTube because you know. Um, I think the cool thing with that, it, it gives everybody the opportunity to um, see it who might not e- be able to, you know, if this was, you know, a DVD or something like that. And I, th- you know, I don't think you can really, anybody could really accuse you, hey, this guy's cashing in on his um, buddy's death. It's nothing like that, you know? No, it really is. I mean, I could have withheld it and tried to get it um, distributed, which it may happen at some point on Amazon yeah. or something like that. But the reality is, is exactly what you said. I mean, uh, Dirt wasn't a super famous guy. I mean, he was known. He did some great stuff. He worked with some really big people. But the fact is, is I really just wanted it to be out there to for all his friends and his family, and including me, to watch whatever they wanted to watch. And number two, I wanted his story to be up there for future generations to possibly discover. And you know, it's through these interviews like this that I do for the new record, and whenever I get a chance to talk to people, I bring it up, because it's not just a mere fact of, of me just saying, oh, just watch this, because he was my, my band member and my friend. It's just a really, really great film, and I, I implore you to check it out. And yeah, then, I will. You know, prior to the interview, just let me know what you think of it, because yeah. there, nobody's walked away from it saying, like, oh, you know, like, people watch it, and they go, oh my god, I had no idea this guy did all this. Like, this is, this is an amazing story. Because what I will say before I even do watch it is um, what I think is kind of makes this so unique and interesting. You could have gone the other route too and said, you know what? Well, we're going to make a documentary about the band's history. You know, we've been around 25 years, and and we'll we'll be sure to mention him towards the end of the film or whatever. Where where you decide, no, he he um, he, he was so, so special to me that he deserves a film of his own. Yeah, and he really does. And again, man, I mean, um, everybody that doubts that that he had this really pretty fantastic life, again, at the end of the movie, they've they've completely let go of that that assumption. Because when you actually see, he was also a tattoo artist, oh, and he wow. became pretty pretty famous at tattooing, and he worked on some big clients like Kelly Clarkson wow. and Steve-O and Britney Spears. So, like, the more you find out about all this stuff, you're like, holy crap, you know, like, it's it makes a lot more sense. And, you know, again, like, it's just something that he asked for that, that we t- discussed prior to his passing, and um, it's just something that uh, that, I, that I knew he loved, and I know that all his family and everybody loves. Yeah, and what's interesting is you, you mentioned um, Doyle, legendary um, guitar player from the Misfits, and I recently... Um, as, as you know, you share the same publicist as Doyle. I recently got a chance to interview um, Doyle, and um, as you may or may not know, um, as great of a guitar player and everything as he is, he's a man of a few words. And I'd I'd actually interviewed him once before, and the publicist it kind of um, told me, you know, you know, he's he's a man of few words. So he he made a few suggestions that were really helpful because um, when, when talking to him. Um, you had to kind of pull things out of him and ask certain things. Like, you told me, you know, he doesn't want to talk about the Misfits. He wants to talk about the Doyle band, which I understand, you know. But, but like, uh, uh, you're much more talkative, and the interview here is, is I think, turning out great. Interview with him, interestingly enough, it lasted for about 14, 18 minutes. But you know what? With the suggestions that the publicist gave me, I thought, okay, well, you know, because he was telling me a lot of times, Doyle, when you talk to him, it's yes, no. But I was able to pull some stuff out of him, so it, it's kind of... Um, it's kind of interesting, but but he, he was a real fun interview too. Yeah, I like Doyle. I mean, I've only met him a couple of times whenever we yeah. we played with him. I think we we done maybe like a handful of shows. We did like a, like a couple of like two dates where we did like a couple of days out on the road. But yeah, you know, he's he was a very nice guy. I knew his, I've known his manager for a uh, Bruce for twenty something years. Wow. So you know, uh, but uh, yeah, no, I, I I was like we always loved opening up for him. So it was it was really cool. And the last show that Dirt and I ever played together was opening up for Doyle. So Amazing. very uh, very interesting. And in the movie again, you'll see Dirt actually have pictures with Doyle at that show. So again, another interesting plug for the movie. Wow, wow. And I, and, yeah. and I must mention by by the, just so people know also the Black Level Six, our new album. Uh, that's the last album that Dirt and I did together. Oh yeah, so it, it, actually yeah. played on that album. 
And then I also want to mention the fact that the um, that the new video we were talking about um, is kind of dedicated to him. Talk talk a little bit about your decision to do that. Well, like I just said, he uh, he played actually on that track. So the bass player that we have now in the band is named Jimmy Minge. Uh -huh. He's a great guy and he's a good friend of mine. Um, when Dirt uh, left the band, uh, when he was you know still alive, and I and he was replaced, he actually Jimmy actually called Dirt up and said, "Hey, you know, I was thinking about going on this audition for Society One." And Dirt was like, "Oh yeah, absolutely." And they talked a little bit. And he actually gave him some pointers on how to play his parts and you know do do him justice to get to get into the band. So um, you know that's Dirt that you hear in the video, but it's yeah. Jimmy playing playing the bass. Oh wow! Okay. But, uh, that's why we dedicated the the next couple videos to him because that's actually Dirt on the songs. Oh wow! But Jimmy, the guy that that replaced Dirt got Dirt's blessing so it's very important for me for him you know to be in the band because it's not like I just replaced Dirt like Dirt gave the thumbs up to Jimmy wow. and uh, it means a lot to me because it's like that's who Dirt approved to, to replace him and not a lot of people get that get that option you, yeah, you know yeah, what I mean yeah, like, yeah and again the video and the single we're talking about is for, for the song uh, Live Fast and um, that's kind of cool that he got to kind of pick, uh, hand pick his replacement because I, I would imagine I was getting ready to ask you that you know, as far as replacing him, um, I imagine that kind of be a strange kind of um, feeling like, oh, you know, anybody we get, they got to be at least as good as he was. Oh, man. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, you would think, but but he, believe it or not, got to uh, got to replace him. And then um, and then it just it just happened to work out that way. And because at the time, you know, there was in a couple other bands and he moved back to his hometown he, he left Hollywood which we addressed in the movie yeah. and that's why he was able to pick his replacement to be able to go into in, into the band so I mean it's just one of those things that just worked out and I'm amazing. thankful that it did amazing and you know um, again in regards to Live Fast um, the video I wanted to ask you like um, are you all involved with like the video production the directing of it because what I was enjoying really about the film the, the video is um, like it, it goes to a lot of different kind of odd different kind of angles of the different band members before like it even shows a um shows you in the screen and um i just love the kind of different angles and the different cuts i've never um kind of seen a video done like that yeah well uh, again another thing that you're probably unaware of about me is that i'm actually a music video director i've been a music video director for the last 10 years That's i've why worked I asked. with john five yeah. from Rob zombie i've wow. worked with wednesday 13 dope wayne static dmc from run dmc orgy uh i've done uh, motor grader uh i've oh, done uh, pretty boy floyd wow. uh i've worked with a ton of people zach wild i've worked with on something um so i've worked with a lot of different people in terms of music uh, music video production so yeah i uh, i directed that video and it was ultimately my concept and uh i ended up actually shooting the majority of that video we just did it about uh, a couple hours before we did an actual rehearsal and i just said hey guys we're going to shoot a quick video and i have an idea of what i want to do uh so i just threw got all the camera and the lights and everything together and i just just filmed it and then for my parts i just threw the camera on a monopod and i handed it to my girlfriend and i just said hey shoot me and then i just edited it all in post-production then put it all together and, and that's the video that you see for i never saw you that, that's kind of amazing i didn't even know that you were a video director but i thought you know just just looking at all the videos that you've posted so far like we we're talking to the top interview i thought man this guy's got to be into video directing um or or something like that um because he just got such an eye for things i've, I've been told that i that i have a, a it's, it's noticeable and i can really package and wrap video production in terms of social media or music videos or interviews or movies i just have a, a, a natural kind of gift in terms of being able to do that uh and that's how i make my living i mean i, I do make money off of my band but not as much as i used to back in the heyday so i that is my my day job is, is video production of some sorts i actually have two shoots this week uh but uh yeah so that's why a lot of the stuff comes across the way that it is because it's technically being done by a professional yeah and it, it's kind of amazing i was able to pick up on that because i mean we haven't even talked about um your gift as far as you know songwriting and that goes i mean um are you a principal songwriter i mean you're kind of the main guy mainstay in the band all these years but um do other guys get to contribute? Um, well, it just it really depends. I mean, Dirt and I did, uh, like for the last record, we, you know, Dirt had about, I think, three or four songs in that last record. And then obviously I would, he'd come in with riffs and stuff, and then I'd write the lyrics and all, uh, all that. And then uh, the rest of the songs, the other, 
about 10 songs on the record I, I basically just wrote myself. I play guitar and you know I have a little studio and and I can program and do all the do all the stuff. I actually produced the record myself, uh, engineered with Patrick Burkholder. Um, and then it was mixed by Greg, Greg Hedson of the Circle Jerks and Bad Religion. Wow. wow. Uh, so yeah, that was an amazing experience. But um, yeah, yeah, I, I write uh, the majority of the stuff over the course of the years, but there has been other contributors, uh, and, you know, who's ever been in the band, but it's, you know, mainly more of like each record's a, you know, 30, 70, with me being 70, maybe 10, 90, with me being 90. I'm always more of it, but that's how I keep control of the sound still sounding like my band. That's what I can um, say, yeah. when I take other people's ideas and stuff, I'll tend to mold them and, and things like that. But absolutely, I'm, I'm not 100% soul writer. Uh, Dirt absolutely wrote uh, a lot of stuff. He wrote, like I said, three or four tracks on Black Level 6. He wrote a couple tracks on the album before that, Rise from the Dead. Uh, you know, so on and so forth. So yeah, it, it, but I am the primary, primary songwriter. Well, I, I imagine too, uh, you know, for a band that's been together 25 years, um, you being the one constant, you got to kind of be the one to continue to keep it in the society one box, and you know you're the visionary, so to speak, and you don't want you want to stray too far away from that. Yeah, I mean, when you start letting too many people write, it just it, it can it can oh. it has the potential of being better or bigger, yeah. but there definitely is a cohesive sound that kind of inter twines between every album over the last yeah. almost 25 years so and, yes and, and like you said the current album you know that you're getting ready to go back on tour um tour with um you said next year right february yeah we got a little bit to go it's not until next february but um uh yeah black level six we just we wanted to get it out because uh not to give too much away but yeah. next year is going to be our 20th anniversary of our biggest album ever exit through fear wow. so the 20th anniversary is coming up and we have something special planned for that wow uh, but we, we haven't really talked about it yet um uh, because we're waiting to get all our ducks in a row we actually okay. just met with our old a and r guy over to eric records they unfortunately still own that record wow. so we were trying to get them to be able to give us some type of rights or be involved with it somehow and unfortunately they didn't go for it so we've had to get creative in terms of how we're going to commemorate that album but that's why we released black level six now uh just so we could do what we got to do and then get start getting ready next month for next year and the, the tour next year for the 20th anniversary of oh, our wow. biggest record ever so, year. oh wow that that's exciting something to look forward now i was going to ask with all this downtime and because of covid and everything um have you been work uh, busy writing new material like looking towards the next album you've got anything you know recorded well, that's the whole thing, man. I mean, I don't really know if I should say right now, but I, I guess I'm going to say it next month. So what basically is going to happen is this, and it's never really been done before. So our biggest album ever, as I said, is Exit Through Fear. Yeah. And the 20th anniversary is next year. So we don't have the rights to that album. I kind of um, hear you. So we, yeah. could, we could tour on it, but what we've decided to do is this, is we went back into the original demos from the sessions of Exit Through Fear. And those original demos are very, very, unique because check this out you want to talk about history yeah. on that album you have raven from ministry killing joke and prong wow. playing bass on the and on that album you've got ivan de prune from white zombie playing that album and then you have bill kennedy who helped produce and has credited for nine inch nails downward spiral and broken who is no longer with us but produced uh, that album and then you've got wade norton who has like literally 50 platinum records for engineering things wow wow Wow. that album so we went back into those sessions and we went back into those demos and we picked 10 songs that didn't make the original album of exit through fear wow. and what we're going to do is is we're going to re-record those 10 songs that were written and in the actual sessions for exit through fear but didn't make the actual original record so we're going to release a record of basically b-sides that was actually recorded during that time we can't release the actual tracks yeah. unfortunately with ivan or raven because they were just demos yeah but the material was was legitimately written back then and then we're going to uh release the album and we're going to call it exit through 20 fears wow 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 how cool is that yeah well, that doesn't start until next month because right now we're still in the process of getting up. We're trying to get up another hundred clips in on the social media sites and into the reels and into circulation of the band's history. Well, so you're, that's, you're one that's of the busiest. The, the project for the next three weeks. You're one of the busiest guys, you know, in metal. I mean, or music uh, industry. Because I mean, when you're not doing this, 
you know, you're posting videos. You, you got your other day job as a, a video production director. So, um, man, you're, you're keeping busy. Yeah, man, you know, like, people don't realize it. Like, the fact is, is that uh, if I was a little more famous or had a little more press like I used to, I mean, people would just be like, holy moly, you're like the like the busiest, hardest working guy around. But uh, unfortunately, you know, I don't, I don't really get the same type of attention that I used to. So a lot of people are just unaware of it until they actually dip their toe in. Yeah, you just got to remind people you're, world. you got to remind people you're very, because like I said, I, I heard of a band until, um, your publicist sent me a press release. I wasn't even sure if a band was still around, so I'm glad to hear you guys are still out there doing it. And, um, and you yeah, know, thanks. Well, you know, the big, one of the big problems, you know, with that is, is that a lot of the major uh, publications, you know, and, and websites yeah. won't cover us anymore. And it, it, for whatever reason, it's fine. It's their prerogative. Yeah, they can yeah. do whatever they want to do. But that's why a lot of people, you know, we all of a sudden, uh, somebody will see a clip online and go, oh, my God, I didn't know this band was still around. Or sometimes we even go on tour, one-offs or actual runs with, with bigger bands, and we're playing in front of people, and they come up to us afterwards, and they're like, oh, my God, I saw you in 2007 or 2013. I didn't know you were still around. And on the flip and side like, of that, yeah, here, here we are. And on the flip side, for a band that's been around 25 years, you know, you've you got people probably just discovering you for the first time thinking you're a new band. You know, oh, no, we've been, we've been together 25 years. You can go... Um, check out some of the previous albums, but um, I will tell you, Matt, I've enjoyed talking to you today, and, and let's keep in touch, because what I like to do is kind of, um, uh, once I interview somebody, I like to kind of, we're like a family in the sense, like you said, I like to keep in touch, and when you got something going on, give me a call, and, and we're definitely going to do it again, because I like to see that movie you were talking about, and help you spread the word about that, because um, that's kind of what I'm into, you know, and I don't even... Um, get paid for doing this. I do it for the love of um, music and kind of spreading the word about the music I love. So, um, yeah, uh, I think I think I hit you up on Facebook and we're friends now, but um, let's definitely keep in touch. And, and um, anytime you want to, let's do this again. And probably the next time, like I said, I'm going to reach out to you to interview you specifically about the movie you were talking about. Yeah, please do. Absolutely. A hundred percent. And you feel free whenever you have a chance to watch the movie and, and it, it's, it's a good time for you. Yeah. No time limit. Just please reach back out to me. I'd love to discuss it. And I'm sure that after you watch it, you'll have a lot of things to discuss. Okay. Well, Matt, you got a new friend of me and, and uh, anytime you want to do it, let's, um, let's please remain in touch because um, I, I really dug talking to you today. And I think the more people find out about the band, the better. I, I, I agree. So thank you so much. And I really appreciate it. Take care, buddy. Bye bye. Chaotic Drift Magazine.